Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let's start talking about trigonometric functions. Now, trigonometric functions are functions that have to do with triangles. In specific, triangles that are right. What we're going to be dealing with, at least initially, is triangles that are right. So you must have a right angle. If you don't have a right angle, you cannot use any of the other stuff that we're going to talk about. If you have a right triangle, though, <clears throat> you're going to have a couple things. You're going to have a biggest side that's across from the right triangle. That is the hypotenuse. Now, you're also going to have two legs. Now, these legs are, in essence, interchangeable. They are basically the same. But if I'm talking about angle X, then if I'm talking about angle X, I can say that this leg over here would be considered adjacent. Now, adjacent meaning right next to. Okay, so if I'm sitting adjacent to someone else, I'm sitting right next to someone. This, in this case, the side is adjacent. It's right next to this angle X. Versus over here, this side, this 3, it's all the way across the triangle from it, so we would consider it opposite. Now, it is opposite that angle. If, however, we were talking about this angle, angle Y, we would say that this is still the hypotenuse, but now the 3 is right next to the angle I'm talking about, so it becomes adjacent. And this 4 is now way over here, so it becomes opposite. So opposite and adjacent are determined by which angle you're talking about. You're never going to talk about anything across the 90 except the hypotenuse. And again, if you don't have a 90, you don't have a hypotenuse. Now, we already know one big theorem for dealing with triangles, and that is the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Now, that technically is a really poor way to write it. Because what is A, what is B, what is C? It's better to say leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Hypotenuse squared. So we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem, but again, the Pythagorean theorem only works if you have a right triangle. Now, we do have these other measurements that we can take off of a right triangle. The first one we call sine. Okay, so it is spelled... S-I-N-E, but we abbreviate it S-I-N, and it's still pronounced sine. And that deals with opposite over hypotenuse. All it is is a standard ratio that says on any given angle, let's say 32 degrees, that the ratio of the opposite side of the hypotenuse is always going to be the same, but, and it tells you the number, the cosine, the ratio of a 32 degree angle. Its adjacent side and hypotenuse are always going to be the same ratio, the same relationship, but same thing for tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, the rela cotangent of 32, the relationship between the adjacent and the opposite side is always the same. Now, the nice thing in math is we like things that are constant because things that are constant allow us to find things that are unknown, therefore variable. So... If we were to try to simply find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent of x, the sine of x is going to be opposite over hypotenuse 3 over 5. Cosine of x is adjacent over hypotenuse 4 over 5. Tangent of x, you'll notice I always have to put the x. I can't just put tangent. It has to be tangent of something. Tangent of what? In this case, x. Opposite over adjacent, 3 over 4. Uh, then we go up here and we get cosecant. That's hypotenuse over opposite. That's 5 over 3. Then we have secant of x. That is opposite, or the invert, reciprocal, sorry, reciprocal of cosine, which is 3 fourths. And finally, cotangent goes together along for the ride with tangent, and we come up with four-thirds. So you'll notice sine always goes with cosecant. They are reciprocals of one another. Cosine goes with secant. They are also reciprocals of one another. Tangent goes with cotangents. They are reciprocals of one another. Okay, so th those go together. Everything has a cos. Sine goes to, ironically, cosecant, 
Cosine goes to secant. Tangent goes to cotangent. Now, I found the sine, cosine, tangent, secant, cosecant, cotangent of x. Let's do the same thing for y. Sine of y equals opposite, which is 4, over hypotenuse 5. Cosine of y, 3 adjacent over 5. Tangent of y, that's going to be now the opposite side is 4 because it's all the way across. 4 over adjacent, which is 3. Se uh, cosecant of y, cosecant of y would be hypotenuse over opposite, so it's going to be 5 over 4. Secant of y is going to be 5 over 3. And finally, cotangent y equals 3 over 4. So you'll notice they're different because we're talking about different angles. Okay. So that's you going from a triangle with sides, talking about sines, cosines, tangents, so Katoa, Chosakao, okay, uh, however you wish to remember them. You must memorize these pieces. You must memorize Pythagorean theorem. You must be able to find these. Now, let's go geometry review. The geometry review is the fact that in geometry, you learn special triangles. These are your special triangles. And two of the special triangles are a 30, 60, 90 triangle. The nice thing about the 30, 60, 90 triangle is that you're always going to have these relationships. Across from 30 is always 1. Across from 60 is always root 3. Across from 90 is 2. So these relationships always go together. If you wished, you may even write them as follows. 30, 60, 90, 1, root 3, 2. And they, that's what's across from them. So if you wish to, you may write them like that. That might be helpful information to you. Now, over here you have another special triangle, which is the 45, 45, 90 triangle. The 45, 45, 90 triangle is 1, 1, root 2. Now, it makes sense that if these two angles are the same, according to the isosceles triangle theorem, the sides opposite congruent angles must be congruent. And so, therefore, if I have 45 across from it's a 1, 45 across from it is a 1, and so that leaves the hypotenuse that if I use Pythagorean theorem, I'm going to come up with across from the 90 is root 2. You must, 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 must know those. I expect you to know them. If you don't know them, don't even question why I look at you strange. Now, finally, that brings us to something like this, where we have a lot of things that we don't know. Here we had all three sides. Here we had three sides, three angles. Here we have some different things that we need to talk about. Now, the first thing we need to deal with or talk about is we have this angle here, but I only have one side. If I wanted to find the missing angle, that is no big deal, because in every triangle in the Euclidean plane, we have, they add up to 180 degrees, so I take 180, that would be a 17 degree angle plus a 90 degree angle plus x, solve it, x is going to equal 73, if I'm not mistaken. So you come up with 73 degrees. Now, if, on the other hand, I want to find this side, I'm going to have to work a little bit harder at it. I know the 17. I know the side that is opposite the 17. I want to know the side that's adjacent to 17. Well, wait a minute. Opposite and adjacent, that is either tangent or cotangent. I'm going to stick with tangent. Tangent of 17 degrees equals 5 over z. Now all I need to do is take that tangent, find its ratio. Its ratio would be, real quick, go to the side, double check your mode. Go to mode, make sure that if degrees are listed in your triangle, that degrees are what you're using. So, we went to degree, and I want to say tangent of 17 degrees, enter. It gives me a ratio of 
0 0.3057. That equals 5 over z. At this point, I'm able to find z by multiply by z, then divide both sides by 0 0.3057. That's nothing but algebra. So I take 5 divided by whatever my answer was, and I get z equals 16.35. Now, does it make sense that I'm going to get 16.35 for this side? Well, small angles, according to geometry, are across from small sides. So it makes sense that this big angle, 73, is going to be across from a much bigger side. That gives me 16.35. Now, to find the last side, I could do a couple things. The first thing is, you'll notice I put that right angle in there. I could say 5 squared plus 16.35 squared equals hypotenuse squared. However, I've already rounded this number. I would then be taking a rounded number and squaring that rounding and then putting it together with something else and then square root. I'm going to have rounding all over the place. I would be way better just to try to find angle y by using a different formula. In this case, I have 17. I have 5, I need to know y, so I have opposite, I want to know hypotenuse. Opposite and hypotenuse is sine of theta opposite over hypotenuse. So we come up with sine 17 equals 5 over y, and I do the same process again. Say sine 17 and I come up with 0.2924 equals 5 over y. And I say 5 divided by second answer. And I come up with y equals 17.1. Now, 17.1 is bigger than 16.3, so that makes sense. It's going to look pretty good there. With that, we will move on.